Hi everyone, this lesson is on what to avoid if you have rosacea. So we're going to talk about certain emotional factors, environmental factors, and certain dietary factors that can actually worsen signs and symptoms of rosacea in this lesson. Before we talk about those exacerbating factors, let's talk about what rosacea is. So rosacea is a chronic inflammatory and autoimmune condition involving recurrent episodes of skin lesions on the face. And the signs and symptoms of rosacea includes telling geectasias, erythema or reddening of the face, papules, and pustules as well. And the pathophysiology of rosacea is not entirely understood, but there does seem to be a genetic or family history component of this that is an important risk factor. The topic of this lesson is that there are certain factors, and some of these includes foods and beverages and some environmental factors that can exacerbate symptoms of rosacea. We're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. Before we talk about those exacerbating factors, I want to briefly talk about the pathophysiology of this condition because it's going to better help us understand those exacerbating or triggering factors. So the pathophysiology of rosacea is going to be due to dysregulation of innate and adaptive immune functioning and issues with vasodilation and dilation of lymphatic vessels. Vasodilation is dilation of blood vessels. So with regards to the dysregulation of innate and adaptive immune functioning, this is due to increased expression of a particular cell receptor, and that cell receptor is known as toll-like receptor 2. So there's increased expression and activation of this receptor that leads to dysregulation of innate and adaptive immune functioning. With regards to the vasodilation and dilation of lymphatic vessels, this seems to be due to an increased release of vasoactive peptides, also due to increased expression and activation of TRPV receptors, including TRPV1, 2, and 4. So TRPV stands for transient receptor potential vanilloid. So it's transient receptor potential vanilloid, or TRPV1, 2, and 4. But some other TRPVs can also be implicated as well, but these are the ones we're going to talk about in this lesson. And then another important receptor that can lead to issues with the pathophysiology in this condition includes a receptor called transient receptor potential anchorin 1 or TRPA1 receptor. So there's increased expression and activation of this receptor as well. And along with this, there is activation of what we call an inflammasome. So an inflammasome, as its name implies, is involved in inflammatory processes. So the triggers I'm going to talk about as we go through this lesson are actually going to activate some of these receptors. And this is the reason why I want to talk about the pathophysiology here. Let's talk about the things that should be avoided, the triggers of rosacea. One of them is going to be stress, and this is going to be emotional stress. And emotional stress can actually exacerbate symptoms of rosacea via activation of TRPV1 receptor. So it's going to be important to reduce your stress. Another thing that can trigger rosacea symptoms is sunlight or UV exposure or ultraviolet light exposure. So sunlight exposure or ultraviolet light exposure worsens symptoms through activation of TLR2 and TRPV4 receptors. So in order to reduce ultraviolet light induced activation of these receptors, it would be good to wear sunscreen or try to avoid sunlight as much as possible if you have rosacea. Some other triggers include alcohol. So alcohol can trigger symptoms of rosacea via activation of TLR2 and TRPV1 pathways. And in some alcoholic beverages, it's even worse because there are higher levels of histamine in certain alcoholic beverages like wine. And this histamine can actually cause vasodilation. So wine, or more specifically red wine, can lead to not only activation of TLR2 and TRPV1 pathways, but also increase the vasodilation because it has higher levels of histamine. It's a histamine-rich beverage. So it would be best to avoid alcohol and especially red wine. Now, hot liquids can also trigger rosacea as well, and it's actually going to be the heat from the hot liquids that can actually trigger rosacea. So excessive heat from hot liquids and from weather, and we'll talk about this later on, can actually activate TRPV1 and 2 receptors. So it'd be best to wait for hot beverages like hot tea or coffee to cool down before drinking it. Another important trigger of rosacea is eating spicy food, and specifically chili peppers or other spices that contain capsaicin. So capsaicin is the chemical that actually causes us to feel that burning sensation when we eat spicy food. So it actually activates heat receptors and the heat receptor in the mouth is actually TRPV1. So TRPV1 in the mouth activation of this receptor actually leads to us having the sensation of a burning sensation. And this is the same receptor that is activated by those hot liquids we just talked about. And activation of TRPV1 receptors in the mouth again causes that burning sensation, but then itself, because it's activating TRPV1 and there's increased expression of that receptor in rosacea, 
this can actually trigger rosacea symptoms in those patients. So it'd be best to avoid or reduce your consumption of spicy food. Now, cheese can also be another important dietary factor that can worsen rosacea. Cheese is itself a histamine-rich food, and along with this, also processed meats are histamine-rich as well. And as I mentioned before, with regards to red wine, histamine can cause vasodilation, worsening the redness and flushing symptoms. So it'd be best to avoid cheese and processed meats. Chocolate is also another important trigger of rosacea. Chocolate contains something called cinnamaldehyde, and cinnamaldehyde actually activates TRPA1, or transient receptor potential anchoring 1, to exacerbate symptoms of rosacea. And chocolate itself also triggers the release of histamine. So it's something that can actually both activate TRPA1, but also lead to the release of histamine from other cells. So it'd be best to actually try to avoid eating or at least reduce your consumption of chocolate. Tomatoes can also trigger rosacea in some patients as well. And again, it's because tomatoes also contain cinnamaldehyde. And again, as we just learned, cinnamaldehyde activates TRPA1. And tomatoes like chocolate can actually trigger the release of histamine as well. So again, try to avoid eating tomatoes if that happens to be a trigger for you. Significant temperature changes can also be another potential trigger as well. So significant heat or cold, we talked about the heat from hot liquids being a potential trigger and Cold exposure can also be a potential trigger as well. Heat exposure specifically, again, activates TRPV1 and 2, and cold weather activates TRPA1. So again, it'd be best to try to either put on good clothing when you're out in very cold weather and try to avoid too much heat exposure. Both of these can help to reduce the triggering of rosacea symptoms. There can be some other weather effects as well that can lead to an exacerbation of rosacea symptoms, and this includes wind exposure. So wind blowing on the face can actually lead to activation of some of those receptors we talked about before, and humidity. Humidity actually activates TRPV4. And then exercise can also be another trigger for some patients, so especially heavy or rigorous exercise. This can actually lead to activation of TLR2 and TRPV1 pathways. And there are some medications and supplements that can trigger rosacea symptoms, and these include beta blockers, topical steroids, and vitamin B3 or niacin supplementation. Niacin can cause flushing, but in patients with rosacea, it can be even worse. So these are some other potential triggers for rosacea flare-ups. So the triggers we talked about in this lesson are not going to affect everybody. Some patients will have some triggers, some patients will have other triggers, but knowing the most common triggers can help you think about and be aware of what may be triggering your potential flare-ups of rosacea. So triggers you find that are causing your rosacea symptoms, you can avoid those. If you want more information on rosacea, please check out my full in-depth lesson on this topic as we talk about more of the pathophysiology, the signs, symptoms, and how it's diagnosed and treated in that lesson. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.